Hey everyone, thanks for tuning into this episode of Lively Charleston. Our goal with this show is to interact and engage with the people, places, and businesses that make Charleston the best city in the world. Today we're going to meet and chat with a seriously badass local female entrepreneur, not to mention one of my favorite people that I've personally ever met. LA was just the seventh hire of a local software company that she helped grow to over 250 employees and eventually landed on the Inc. 500 fastest growing companies list. From there, she started her own company, One in a Mill, which prides itself on being the only culture-driven recruiting organization in the entire world. As if being a wife, mom, and CEO doesn't keep her busy enough, LA just released her first book, Culture Driven Recruiting, which can be found on Amazon.com. I'm super pumped for this episode. I think you guys are gonna really like it too. Let's head inside and meet LA. All right, we are here with the one and only LA. Thank you so much for being here with us. I'm very excited to chat with you and just learn a little bit more um, and share with everybody more about what you've been up to and what your plans are for the future. Yeah, thanks so much for having us here. I know we've been looking forward to this and so we're really happy to, to be here today and tell you all about One in a Mill and what we're doing here in Charleston. Awesome, awesome, very cool. So we have, there's so many places we could get started, honestly. So so you were, um, you were the seventh hire with Spark that was eventually acquired by Booz Allen Hamilton. Right? Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about that because you had a you had a lot of growth there, a lot of opportunity to kind of kind of learn some things while you're with them. Yeah, I did actually. That was probably the best four years of my life. Um, really, really good time. I yeah. So I started out at Aerotech here locally. Um, was able to to kind of get my feet on the ground, figure out the whole rec recruiting game, and um, realized I really liked talking to people and I loved relocating people here to Charleston. It was really fun. Um, I was approached and asked to come on board as a seventh hire to build out a team that we knew was going to be 250 to 350 people. Um, at the time, I didn't really know what we were doing. You know, we were kind of all, it was just like this crazy chaotic mess. It was a beautiful chaotic mess. Uh, nobody slept and we were hiring probably at one point like 10 to 12 senior engineers a week. Um, so really high level roles. We had a deadline that was just over the top. Um, but I had a mentor there who came in and taught me all about culture-driven recruiting and what that looked like. And so our problem at the time was we had this awesome contract for the government. It wasn't glorious work, but it was good work. It was working for um, the Veterans Benefit Management System, so it was doing work for veterans, but it wasn't sexy, it wasn't pretty. Um, so we needed to come up with a way in order to attract really epic talent. Um, and so he taught us all basically um, from the ground up, like this is how we will go about doing this. It doesn't matter what you're working on or what the product is. If you build a place where people actually want to be and they feel empowered and respected and they love what they do and they love the people around them, then the talent will come. And so our only goal was to make sure that when people pulled in on Monday mornings, that they loved their life. And so when your goal is that, and it's not fill as many seats as you need to, then the game kind of changes a little bit. Um, so I learned a ton. I learned a ton about you know, candidate experience, what that looks like, how to create an epic onboarding. You know, once you get your candidates in the door, how do you make sure that they're still happy? How do you measure their engagement? Um, so being able to put metrics and tangibles around that. Um, it was just, oh, it was such a great time. I mean, we even, we even got to go up to the Northeast to celebrate for the Inc. 500. For South Carolina, we were number one, and then for it, the country, we were number 13 of fastest growing companies on Inc. 500. It was one of the best nights. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty amazing to, I mean, yeah, if you're the seventh person, that's basically, that startup zone. That's like. Oh yeah. Um, I bought the first Keurig. I, I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, th exactly. <laughs> that's the, the coffee pot that's like on the cardboard box mm -hmm. from the last shipment that came in. And oh like, yeah ping pong table in the corner type of uh, environment is, is what I'm imagining. I mean, I used to have to bring candidates in and be like, I really apologize for all the holes in the walls and that there's <laughs> no humans here, but we're gonna make this work, I promise. And then it, I rem I'll never forget one Saturday, we ordered literally like four truckloads of Ikea furniture and had everybody come in and put it together. We ordered pizza, got beer, hung out. It was just, but nobody minded being there, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was just this stage five company energy in the air that you could feel and that you just, 
it's like no other. It's like your eyes have been opened, right? And so that's kind of how I ended up going out on my own and, and leaving that organization. Um, sadly, I, I felt like, you know, it was like a heartbreak, you know, but sure. I knew that my job was done there. And how I knew that was because people were dropping off cakes, champagne, anything they could do to get to the recruiting department, anything they could do to get in the door. Um, and so it's like, my job's done here. And now like it would be a disservice if I didn't go out and teach other organizations how to do the same exact thing in order to retain talent, to hire the best, you know, to suffer less attrition. So it just, it was a calling that I knew I needed to go out and start working with organizations to take them to the next level as well. So now that probably helps us transition into what you do at your company, one in a mill, right? So you have two main pillars. You have your, um, help, help me, Talent the way matchmaking. you phrase it. Yep, it's so, okay. kind of some odd names. Okay. Talent matchmaking, and yep. then we do culture development strategy. Okay, yeah, so the mm -hmm. culture development strategy. So when you come into a company yep. and you help them with that strategy, I would imagine core values is a, is a big piece of that, helping them kind of figure out what those are. Yeah, absolutely. So um, now that I've learned how to do that, um, one of the things that my mentor really taught me to, he would allow me to kind of go along with him to kind of sit and listen to him coach others on this. Um, uh, this is how it works out. So normally, say from a culture development strategy standpoint, I will have a company, say I've never worked with them before. They'll reach out and say, hey, you know, somehow I've heard of you. Most of our business comes in still word of mouth, which is fantastic. Um, even even outside of Charleston um, and they'll say hey you know we're looking to do X Y and Z with our culture um, currently we might be having some dysfunction and some problems at the leadership could you come in and, and give us some coaching um, or our recruiting team is not hitting any of the numbers we feel like we might be able to do things a little bit better than we're doing them could you come in and just really sit down and assess our recruiting team and figure out if there's a better way to do what we're doing to achieve our goals and so culture development strategy is basically we will come in as a team a lot of times. It's mostly me right now because the girls are kind of heads down recruiting. Um, but my director of operations, Blaine, will come in a lot as well. And um, we'll assess the culture. We'll figure out where the broken parts are and help fix those gaps. Um, we'll figure out and listen to what people are looking to do. So say people are having a ton of attrition, we will figure out the reason why and we'll correct it. Um, we'll give people ideas on what to do to build a better culture, um, on ideas to really brand themselves better as an employer. So there's all different pieces to that puzzle, but you know, if you're looking to build an epic culture where people stay, um, I mean, the ROI is amazing on that, then that's where we come in is where if you need help from the ground up or if you're, you've got a broken culture, we help you fix it. Okay. Then we have our talent matchmaking division. Uh, what, what is that? Why do we call it that and what do you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. So talent matchmaking is a very glorified name um, for recruiting. Ultimately, <laughs> okay, you, we okay. are re recruiting. Um, mostly we do technical recruiting. We're very, very good at technical recruiting. That's kind of our expertise. We're very good at C-level recruiting. Um, so at you know all the executive level. But then we kind of get into everything and anything, anything that just kind of makes us feel alive. You know, if we get positions in that we're excited about, then we'll work on them. Um, and so we were very well versed in recruiting and basically everything. But those are kind of our sweet spots. Um, but yeah, talent matchmaking is it's a whole other way of looking into recruiting. So when I was recruiting, at, you know, younger in my 20s, it was just Here's an open seat, make sure it's filled, doesn't matter who it is or what their name is, just make sure that the slot's in there, right? Um, now, since I've learned um, over the last decade, I've learned to really interview people for who they are at their core. Um, and so we really spend the time to not only look at the organization as a whole, right? So when we get a new client in, we'll go in and assess the culture to make sure that it's the culture that we kind of want to be working with. And even if it isn't, that's okay too, but we want to make sure that we hire for the right culture, right? So when we're interviewing our candidates, it's never seats and butts. It's a lot of in-depth culture-driven questions that we ask so that when we can give a write-up to our clients, it is just the most beautiful, like here's the soft skills, here's what they love to do on the weekends, here's why we think they would be the most epic fit here. Um, here's some red flags we might see, right? We're very, very transparent. We over-communicate. Um, 
I think Match.com has done a fantastic job really drilling in and finding good, I mean, everyone I know I feel like lately has been like, oh, we met on Match.com, we met. <laughs> the algorithm works, right? That's the first thing I thought of when you said <laughs> Talent Match. I was like, TalentMatch.com. TalentMatch.com. You need to get that domain. I do. Sign everybody up, yes. <laughs> that's the ticket, okay. See if that's open still. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, I don't know, I like that name. I thought, you know, we're, we're, we're very different than other recruiting firms. Um, we only do direct placement. Um, in the recruiting world, you have direct placement, and then you have temp to hire, or you have a mix of both. Um, I've done both. The reason we only do direct hire is because we want to, we don't want millions of customers, like I said, and bodies flying everywhere. I want to focus on the customers that we love and want to work with, and then find those sweet spots for those candidates that we have that we know will be in the exact fit. Um, and if you're doing temp to hire, then you're really just saying, hey, I think this person may or may not work out. Let's give it 90 days and give it a try. I'd rather say, I know this person's going to work out. It's a direct placement. Here we go. They're full time. Okay, so you obviously you spend a lot of time in and around the tech scene. Tell me what you're seeing here in Charleston uh, with the tech industry, um, especially because uh, you know that's been something that really wasn't that big, you know, even five, ten years ago around here. Yeah. Uh, so what's kind of what are you seeing now, and what do you predict for the future? I love what I see now. I love. I absolutely love it. When I first came here 15 years ago, when I was working with Aerotech there was no solid jobs to be had. Um, you were either in the hospitality industry or you may have been over up in the North Charleston, AAI area, right, right, Bosch. Yeah, exactly. We had a few big players. Now, oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many calls we get a week from new people that have moved to Charleston to set up a software dev shop. They're on, you know, Series B, Series A of funding. They're fully funded. You know, they're they're out there on TechCrunch. They're ready to rock and roll. And they'll come to us and say, "Hey, we're ready to hire." And and my question is always this, like, you know, just out of curiosity, like, why did you choose Charleston? And they'll always say to me, "Well, it's cheaper. The flights are not bad. I can fly in and out. It's cheaper for me to build a software dev shop here than it is up in Connecticut or Boston." Um, and everybody wants to live in Charleston because of the lifestyle. It's done and done. It makes my job so easy. It's, it's Charleston. It's charming. We're on the beach, right? What's not to love? Right. I mean, you can work from your boat. Taxes. Taxes are great. huge. No one really knows about the traffic problem we have yet, so we'll keep that one on, on the, on yeah, the lowdown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we relocate tons of people here. Um, that's kind of what you know we focus on mainly right now is bringing really good talent in from outside of Charleston to help grow you know the population here of the A players. That's what we really want to do. Um, and there's high paying jobs now. People can finally afford to live here. And I think when I first moved here, it was like, well, I know you have a college degree and a couple years of experience, but guess what? You get to live near the beach, so automatic $50,000 pay cut or yep. half off, you know? And yep. that's not, that doesn't work anymore. People are, you know, they're expecting high salaries. I mean, it's not cheap to live in Mount Pleasant or Daniel Island or any of those areas over there where there's great schools, right? So the times are changing in Charleston. There's, t I have more jobs open right now than I have people, which is a great problem to have. Charleston is booming right Absolutely. now. Let's talk about your book. Sure. Okay. Let's, um, so brand new book. We have, this is it right here, right? Yep, this so is it. Yep. So culture driven recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, I would like actually this autographed copy. Can I get an autographed copy before Absolutely. we're done? Okay. Absolutely. It will Absolutely. Not, I promise you won't find Absolutely. it on, uh, on sale yeah, on eBay. I this this, this is going on my shelf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise okay. not to charge you for it either. Deal. <laughs> um, so what is uh, culture driven recruiting? What's, what's this all about? Who's it for? And what's, um, what message are you trying to send with this? Yeah, great question. So, um, my mentor and I actually, we were trying to write this book for years. Um, we had started it. So there's a really good story behind it. Do you want to hear the story? Yes, I want to hear okay. the story. All right. So we had started this book years ago. Um, life happens, life gets in the way, right? Kind of got put on the back burner, put on the back burner, whatever. Um, I was on my honeymoon and Workable, the company I was telling you about out of Boston, our applicant tracking system, they had wanted to do an interview for a talent hacker that they do globally. So I was just going to be a moderator on a panel up in Boston. And so we did a few interviews. Year goes by, meet them again, still trying to figure out what we want to do together as a partnership. Um, met with them back in May of 2018 and they were like, hey, how's your book coming? I was like, good, why? They were like, great, can you have it ready by November? <laughs> and I was like, I'm listening. And they were like, well, we have a really great idea. What we're thinking is we're going to do a fireside chat, invite all of our clients, which potentially could be clients for us. Um, we're going to have you speak on what culture-driven recruiting is. 
and really just get real with our clients and let's have like a we're going to have it catered and we're going to have an open bar and it's going to be this big awesome event and we want you to do a book signing and i was like yes yeah of course i can have it done so i came home and i told my husband and the team and i was like listen i got like two months to write a book because it has to be in publishing by august the end of august so i hired a graphic designer out of uh, California so that he could w work a few hours behind me and get what I needed to get done. Um, I did hire um, an editor to go behind me. S we did use Palmetto Publishing here locally, which they were great. Um, and then I hired an editor to kind of go behind me and just make sure that, you know, I was getting out the message that I wanted to get out. Um, and so we were able to knock it out. We were able to make it up in Boston. The books made it a little bit, a couple hiccups on the way, a couple heart attacks on the way. Um, we flew the entire team up. We had a great celebration. It was so perfect. Um, Fireside chat went, went fantastic. And this is the only book out there right now that is written on culture-driven recruiting. And so the tagline is, there is no talent war if you eliminate your competition. So the message in this book, it's really like a resource book. There's like tons of things in here that we, my mentor and I had put together during our time um, working together. And so what I was hoping for was that people in the recruiting industry or people or CEOs or people that are starting their own companies or maybe even like a COO that's working for a startup can pick this up and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to use this today. Um, and currently we're working on a website where you can download all of these forms for free. We just wanted to get this out there. This is what we're trying to teach everybody is how to build an awesome organization and everything you need to keep your talent happy, to find the right talent and to build the right culture is all in this book. Leanne, thank you so much. I feel like I learned a ton. Hopefully everybody watching uh, learned a ton or at least got a little bit of, of a taste of what it is that you do. Um, now, if somebody wants to learn a little bit more about you um, or One in a Mill or your book, how can they do that? Where can they find you? Book is very easy to find, amazon.com. Um, you can get your copy and actually we just had the Kindle version come out as well, so there's options. Um, but there's only one autograph copy and you can't have it. <laughs> there's only, if you want one, if you want an autograph copy, you're gonna have to DM me. <laughs> um, you can find us all over social media, so specifically we're on Facebook and then um, for Instagram we're at one in a mill, CHS. And then for um, oneinamill.com. I mean, if you're looking for a new career, if you're looking for um, a way to hire amazing talent, oneinamill.com is where you can find us the best. Awesome, fantastic. Yeah. So if you are in the tech industry or if you're just an entrepreneur in general and you're looking for uh, strategies and different ways that you can um, help to engage your culture, check out Culture Driven Recruiting on amazon.com. Check out Leanne, check out One in a Mill Charleston. Thank you guys so much for watching LA. Thanks so much. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it and have an amazing day. That's it for us. All right, that's all we've got for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you wanna be notified every time we release a new video, click that little bell icon. Hope you guys have an awesome day.